Yeah, I can't stop recording, otherwise I'm going to lose this masterpiece of a film on a corrupted file. That would be a pity, wouldn't it? Oh, they're putting something in the bucket. Yep, you have no idea what it is. And this is the good quality, remember? Look at the difference. Uh, there's not much of a difference. But yeah, this is the good quality you're watching. See, look at the difference there. You can see some detail in his clothes, not fuzziness. I wonder how pussy looked on this one. Well, you sort of saw it, but no. Uh, so yeah, anyone have anything on this? I bet tons of people would love to see it. Tons, yeah. What's a ton of people? Let's see, is that like a dozen? Ton of people. How many? How many are a ton of people? Okay, a metric ton is 1,000 kilograms. So we'll say 1,000 people then. Let's say 1,000 people is a ton of people. Well, I don't think 1,000 people would be bothered with this. Anyway, I haven't seen it, but supposedly the DVD release has colour production stills. Ugh, great. Well, if you want that, $70. Or you could find a cheaper one on eBay. So $70 or a cheaper one on eBay. Well, my advice would be, buy the $70 one first, then look on eBay. That's my advice for you. Uh, I have checked several websites and haven't been able to find a copy, legal copy anyways, for under $100. Check on eBay. Uh, same here, I want to watch this, but not for over $100. It's not worth that much. Yeah, it's worth $99 at, at the minimum. 99.99 at the maximum. Or $70, or you could look on eBay. It's up to you. I just bought a mint copy on eBay for 89, 89.00, including shipping, worth every penny. If you have not seen this film, trust me, you must. If you have not seen it, believe me, there is no way you can have an opinion. And that is why you should be skeptical of what you read on the internet. Now, uh, I can have an opinion as to what I spend nearly $100 on. Yeah, the drugs I need to watch this movie. And unless the movie physically comes to life and starts making out with me, like in Videodrome or something, then it's not worth that much. Well, do like that guy. Spend the $89, including shipping, on the movie, and then you have $11 to spend on the hallucinogenics you need to get through the movie and have it pop out of you, have a Jesus on your floor with a rope wrapped around his neck, have a god in the corner slitting his own, f or cutting himself open, spilling his guts all over your floor, and a girl, snot, running down her nose, and then massaging it into her Play-Doh. Uh, well, I have just found a copy somewhere for $130. Who would actually spend that on a DVD? Especially if you've never watched it. You know what you look like to me? With your good bag and your cheap shoes? Uh, that's his quote, I guess. I just searched it here and I found a copy for £17.95 from Amazon. I'll be able to find it cheaper somewhere else, I'm sure. I'm not a manic, depressive, paranoid schizophrenic, so I don't need your advice. Wow, £17.95. Yeah, I think you'd be wary of that, because there's probably the actual DVD published or produced by the actual people who made it. And there's the people who, doing what I'm doing, recorded it, downloaded it, stuck it on a DVD, and charged you £17.95 for it. So, yeah, you're going to think, should I spend $100, or should I spend 17.95 from Amazon? Yeah, it's called art. It's like saying... Who would pay five million for a single image hung on a wall painted by some Italian guy? The only reason most DVDs are 20 bucks or less is because they are mass produced. Copies, if you will. When a work of art or any commodity is rare, the price goes up. I paid $50 and would gladly have paid $300 on eBay for the Criterion edition of John Woo's The Killer. Overall, it's all about what it's worth to you. To own it, not the dollar amount, because at the end of the day, you won't give a fuck about the green pieces of paper 
you traded in, if the item or art you bought gives you good feelings above and beyond. There isn't green pieces of paper everywhere, you know. Most countries, or probably most, not just the land of the free, with their green paper, their money grows on trees. Well, I like that saying, money grows on trees. Yeah, it is the tree. I agree, I also bought Thomas Ligotti's The Nightmare Factory for $80. So money does grow on trees, they're called leaves, but then again, they're probably worth more than the actual paper you're holding. Uh, but then again, paper doesn't disintegrate like a leaf. I suppose it would spend, it would depend on the leaf. The type of leaves you need to watch this film, I'm sure you'd argue are worth more than paper, but there's Jesus. Here you go! Ugh. We couldn't find a cross. This is what we'd be using to hammer them nails in, but... Ugh. We can't be bothered, so we're gonna put you in a sack. I think you're in a sack. Or is this your mother? Are we being your mother? Is that you or your mother? Well, we'll find out afterwards. After we've beaten you to a pulp, we'll take you out. If we see a head shock, we know it's your mother. If we see a... Well, I don't know. If we see, see a balding... A, a balding blob... Let me know, it's not. I found this and thought it was freaking awesome. I think it adds a lot more creepiest than it already has, and he's got a media, mega video link. Do you want to watch the medi, medi, medio, I'm saying medio video, medio video link? If you go on YouTube, there's a pretty sweet electric wizard edit to the movie too. Alright, we'll watch the mega video link, if I remember. Go back in time, remind me. Oh, there's... It's ten pages. We're not going to make it. So, a person who made this film, you should have made it ten hours longer. And then I could have got through all this reading material. Let's go into the Wikipedia page, read some of that. This is an experimental horror film directed and written by E. Elias Mahigi. The film deals with the story of Genesis, but as Merahigi revealed during question and answer sessions, its primary inspiration was a near-death experience he had when he was 19. After a car crash, the film features no dialogue, but uses harsh and uncompromising images of human pain and suffering to tell its tale. It also has no music. Instead, the music is accompanied by the sounds of crickets and occasionally other sound effects, such as grunting and thrashing. Well, I like the idea of having a film with no sound at all. Oh, not no sound. I like the idea of having a film with no words. Uh, but this is not the good way to do it. This is a boring film. Maybe if you cut out an hour of it and just had ten minutes, it would be not so boring. I don't know what's happened. Jesus got smushed with a hammer. His mum got carted off somewhere after she had herself washed. Yeah... The film was shot on black and white reversal film, and then every frame was re-photographed for the look that is seen. The only colours are black and white, with no half-tones. The look is described in the trailer as a raw shack test for the eye. Mahigi said that for each minute of original film it took up to 10 hours to re-photograph it for the look desired. Mahigi revealed in question and answer sessions that he would like this film to be the first of a trilogy. He was experiencing difficulties getting proper funding, and at the time it was unknown if when the two other films would be made. The second film of the unofficial trilogy is a 14-minute film entitled Dear of Celestial Birds. Deals with evolution. It premiered in 2006 on Turner Classic Movies and was shot in similar visual fashion. Well, you did good. 14 minutes is a step step above this. That's probably a good length. If you want to remake this, go back, cut out an hour of it, and have yourself a 10 minute movie. 20 minutes at the most. Cut out all the shit, and try and make it work. I know, you spent 8 hours, a minute, those are eight hours you're never going to get back. I suggest you spend an hour trimming the film down. Salvage it. But people seem to like it. Leave the original. 
But we'll see what the ending is.